Hey everybody, I'm Jason Bent. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I built this beautiful walnut dining room table. Anybody that's been following me for a while knows that I, I just really don't do any kind of client work anymore. And the main reason for that is because I wanted to dedicate all of my time and my efforts on YouTube and my other various social media platforms. So about six or seven months ago, a woman by the name of Leah reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in building a dining room table for her made out of walnut because she had watched my last walnut dining room table that I built and she really liked it and was wondering if I'd be willing to do it for her. It actually turns out that she is sixth generation Hartzell. So when I found out that she was one of the Hartzell family members, I figured, hey, this is a really good opportunity for me to try and give back to Hartzell since they've helped me and my business out so much. But as Leah and I started to talk, I then got really excited about something else which was actually the biggest driving factor for me doing this project in the first place. And that was the fact that I could build this table with the Hartzell lumber and multiple generations of Hartzell family members could sit down at this table and eat a meal and enjoy it. And it was built with the lumber that they built their business off of. And so for me, I just felt like this was a really good opportunity to do that. I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad with the way that the table turned out. And now I'm going to show you how I did it. To start this build off, I just did a rough milling on the lumber that I was going to be using for this. And what I mean by a rough milling is I just took off enough to allow some airflow to get to it and allow these things to sit for about 48 hours just to see if there was going to be any movement from these pieces after my initial milling. And luckily for me, after allowing these some time to sit, I came back out in the shop and there was minimal movement so I could go ahead and finish the milling process getting these to the final thickness. Now, before I actually went into, you know, milling any edge or cutting any edges, I actually wanted to lay these things out and get a really good idea of the orientation that I was gonna use for this tabletop because sometimes that can dictate which side of the board I wanna start my milling on. With my layout all decided, I actually prefer to use my track saw whenever I can on these long boards to get a nice clean edge. I just find that I get better results. And the reason that I do this is because it can be a little bit more challenging depending on the jointer or planer you have and the amount of in-feed and out-feed support. You just have a tendency to end up wasting a little bit more material by doing it that way. So I just find this a lot easier. And then once I get that first clean edge, then I can move over to my table saw and cut it to its final width. The next step was to actually glue up the tabletop itself. And to do this, I just use a series of parallel clamps. After gluing each one of the ends together, I did not use any sort of alignment aids, such as a biscuit or a domino. I did, however, use clamping calls to help ensure the flatness of the tabletop. And for those that don't know, clamping calls are essentially there to help provide even clamping pressure across a wide surface. I let the tabletop dry overnight and then came out the next day, removed the calls and the clamps, and started to do a quick rough sanding. And with that out of the way, I then took the opportunity to go ahead and trim my tabletop to its final dimensions, again using the track saw for this. Now on this table, I did decide to use C channels. Now I will openly state that C channels, I do not think in any way, shape or form are totally necessary. And I know that there's a lot of opposing views and opinions on this. The way I look at it is it definitely can't hurt. To cut these out, it's fairly simple, and I actually have a YouTube video showing this process specifically, but for me, I just laid out where I wanted each one of these C channels to go, and then I used my router with a straight edge to cut each one of the channels for the sides of the C channel, and then use the same router with a base to make sure that I could hog out the material so all of the C channels would sit flush to the table surface. Once I was happy with the locations of the C channels, I then took this opportunity to mark where I was going to place each one of the threaded inserts, which is what's actually going to hold the C channels to the table. With the majority of the work on the top done, I then went ahead and moved on to the base. Once I had all of the pieces cut 
to their final width. I then took everything over to the assembly table because now I needed to make all the cuts on my miter saw. And all of the angles on this table are a five degree angle. The wide portion of the base will be at the top, going down at a five degree angle to a more narrow portion at the bottom. Once I had all of my base pieces cut, I then did a quick mock-up so it would allow me an opportunity to mark all the locations for the dominoes. And the primary construction that I'm using for this table base is the Festival Domino. And not only the 500, but I also use the 700, which you will see here momentarily. I like using the domino for methods like this because not only does it add a lot of strength to the joint, but it also makes the dry fit and assembly process very, very quick and easy. And then here is where I decided to use the Domino 700. Because of these long stretchers, I wanted to have a little bit more length in my tenon. Now, I don't by any means think this is absolutely necessary. I've done this exact same application with the Domino 500, but I just figured it would be a good opportunity to mix the two. So after I cut all of my mortise locations with the 700, I then moved on to another dry fit assembly. After dry fit, it was time to go ahead and actually start gluing the base together. And that is when my son decided to call and FaceTime me from Germany. Hey buddy. Leo, did you ride a, did you ride a horsey today? Wow. I'm, I'm putting together something, buddy. Once I had everything glued up, it was then time to go ahead and clamp everything. Now, the base for this was fairly long and it was outside the capacity of any of my single clamps. And that is where these Revo parallel clamp extenders that Bessie offers come in super handy because it allowed me to take two of my 50 inch parallel clamps and give myself way more capacity. And they really worked very well for this application. After those had an opportunity to sit in the clamps for 24 hours, I then came out the next day, removed them from the clamps and started working on some of the finished details, such as softening the edges. After that, I did what I do on most of my furniture projects and added some of these recessed leveling feet, which I also have a YouTube video on this, if you're interested in finding out more about it. And then finally, I will be using Z clips to attach the tabletop to the base on this on the long ends. And so I took this opportunity to again, use my domino to cut out the holes to accept the Z clips. That way I don't have to worry about doing it later. With most of the base complete, I then put my focus back on the tabletop. And the first thing was to go and remove the C channels to prep for the finish work. After that, I use my edge guide to go ahead and sand all the end grain for the table. And this edge guide also does a very good job of rounding over any corners. And with that out of the way, I then took this eighth inch round over bit and just did a nice soft round over around the entire table. And now I'll try to make sanding look sexy. Didn't work. Okay, let's move on. After that, I flipped the table over, sanded it to my final grit, and then took an opportunity to see what this thing was gonna look like with some finish on it. So with the table finish ready, I actually took this opportunity to mark out the locations for my Z clips before applying the finish. That way I would have reference later on when I actually assembled this and I wouldn't have to realign anything. And to do this, I just laid each one of the Z clips in place and used an awl to make a small indentation. Now the finish that I used on this table was a new product to me and it's from Target Coatings. And I used their sealer as well as their conversion varnish. And both of these products are water-based. I sprayed two coats of sealer and three coats of the conversion varnish. 
After allowing the sealer to dry for about two hours, I came out and sanded it with a 220 grit sanding sponge very lightly just to work out any imperfections. And once that was complete, I cleaned it off with a water and denatured alcohol mix. And after that, it was ready for another coat. And once the sealer was done, I followed the exact same steps for the top coat with the exception of I did not sand between the second and third coat because it was so smooth that there was just really no need to do so. After letting the finish cure for 24 hours, I then came back out and took this opportunity to go ahead and reinstall the C-channels and this thing was ready for delivery. Now for the delivery, we actually brought in the top and base and assembled everything in the house in place just because we thought it would be a lot more easy to maneuver. And I was even lucky enough to have my good buddy Sedge help me with the delivery of this process. And, you know, good help is hard to find, but he, he makes a pretty good apprentice, I guess. Can I take this back up to the car, sir? Yeah, I don't need it anymore. Okay. I'm <laughs> <Nice taking out. laughs> Sedge, take my tools back out to your car. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Get it warmed up for me too. Yes, sir. I'll have, I'll have the, the AC perfect for you, sir. And now it was time for Leah to see her table in person for the first time. And based on her reaction, I really think she liked it. Okay, right there. All right, now you can look. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pretty. I love it. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. We even put your chairs there for you. I know, you're so sweet. I have the two end ones, but they're fabric, so we're going to scotch guard them before we let the kids sit in them. Do you like it? Oh my goodness, isn't that so pretty? She, she wants to rub her face on it. Oh, way Let's more pretty than what was there, huh? Oh my god. So that's going to do it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed that build process. Um, Again, I, I just think it's really cool that I had the opportunity to do this. And hopefully this table with the Hartzell Walnut will continue to be passed down uh, to further generations of the Hartzell family. And they'll be able to enjoy this table with their lumber for many years to come. If you guys want to find out more information about me and what I do and my other various social media platforms, head over to benswoodworking.com. As always, I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch. And until next time, get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.